Hi, this is Shady, and since we're still on the topic of the throws regarding the ground game, there is a lot of uh, arguments against judo throws in particular, not only the fact that they need so much mastering in order for them to be effective and applicable, but also they propose a lot of risks if you want to transition to the ground against someone who knows how to grapple on the ground. So a while back, I did a video on Tonetani Oda's choice of takedowns, and even him chose stuff that are in common with wrestling like the double leg, the knee pick, etc. And the reason is they can be a lot easier to engage in and at the same time they can transition much better to the ground. And also there's a lot of kumite or grip fighting that you don't have to deal with in order to finish this. And the kuzushi etc. is much easier. So today what I like to talk about is the big devastating throws of judo like harai goshi, uchimata, o sotogari, are they truly worth it and how you can actually take them to the ground. So the arguments are the following. The first one being is that here, for example, I was against Rokas and in order to get the most back exposure, I had to roll through all the way. And in a sense, yes, uh, the fact that he can roll and get me in his side control is very much valid. Um, that's one argument. The second one is, of course, the um, blatant back exposure, for example, um, Seo Otoshi or drop Seo Enage. Uh, both these techniques can create a back exposure, but if you are someone that's been doing it since you were a child, I doubt a BJJ guy can take her back, but nonetheless, it is still um, a concern to be raised. So today what I like to talk about is the uh, concept of Makikomi, it's something that not even judokas talk about. So Makikomi throws are wrapping around throws, Maki means to wrap and coming, you know, wrapping technique and wrapping them around you. So all these great and big throws that we love in judo, like Harai Goshi, Hanemaki, Hane Goshi, Uchimata, Osotogari, they have a Makikomi finish to them, uh, which by default become um, sacrificing throws, meaning you have to go down to the ground in order for you to finish them. Not only that, they're incredibly devastating and considered very dangerous, but also there's no legs for you to deal with, no one's gonna take your back, and you have that arm fully pinned to you and wrapped around you, hence the name. So here you are seeing Uchimata Makikomi. So what you do is you let go of the lapel as you get that lift and you start wrapping around. And as you see how you end, down, you end up on the ground, you already got past the legs, um, you already have that arm pinned, and you can transition to any type of Kesagatame, Ushiro or um, Kuzure. So here you can see absolutely devastating he didn't even have to grip um, the lapel he had the sleeve only and so what he did was pull the sleeve and you know do like a one step uchimata and just simply put his arm on the ground and here he's already in ushiro kesa gatame so um, you don't need that big roll to get the back exposure in order to you know get the ippon and they will end up uh, putting you inside control etc so here is another one is o sotomaki komi so the the start is an O Sotogari attempt, and as you experience a lot of resistance, you can let go of the lapel and start wrapping around and going down to the ground, ending up in the same position. So I've talked with a lot of, you know, PJJ brown belts, purple belts, black belts, and a lot of them seem to really like O Sotogari for some reason. And um, O Sotogari is not the easiest to throw. Uh, as a judoka, I can tell you this, and a lot of people say that it's the first throw you learn and the last one to master, and I get it. For me, it's one of those um, strongman throws because you really have to overwhelm the upper body. It's not like a uochigari or a kochigari where you can just steal it. Like, I stole that ippon against that 140 kilogram black belt, but it, I, I couldn't have done that with osotogari. There's just no way. I know a lot of people can circle around and as they are circling they can catch it but still it's a tough man throw so if i might be wrong but um it, it, it does require a lot of overwhelming of the upper body so you need that you know those strong arms in my opinion and that strong chest so here you can see that if you cannot really finish it fully through you can actually just finish as a makikomi and there you can get it and here is me demonstrating an Uchimata Makikomi. Just let go and look at how I end up. I already have the arm wrapped around me. So if I turn the hips towards his belt, I can uh, engage in uh, Ushiro Kesagatame, 
or if I turn towards his head, I can engage in, you know, kusure kezagatame or uh, hon kezagatame. So this is kusure kezagatame. This is by far my favorite pin. Um, you can see here if you wrap the arm around you after the makikomi, you can turn towards their head and get the arm either underhooked or wrap their head or grabbing their collar. So um, again, you don't have to pass guard. You don't have to worry about any risks. And at the same time, it is just a devastating throw. So uh, here is Ushiro Kesagatame. In, in case you want to turn the other way around, you switch the hands that is grabbing the sleeve and the other one goes to grab the belt or the skirt or the pants. Uh, anything on the opposite waist. And you can get it here. Great. And from there, you can just do whatever, depending on the situation, how they are reacting and how you go with the flow. So this video is to talk about these big, difficult, devastating throws of judo and why, in my opinion, they can be very much useful. So if you are someone who already is, you know, shodan, nidan in judo and transition to BJJ, which a lot of people are doing, um, I suggest, so, so you probably know your basics at that point, obviously. So add that little makikomi touch to your throws at the end and see and let me know how it goes for you. And again, makikomi is something that's just never talked about. All we know about makikomi is, you know, it, they can be incredibly dangerous on the shoulder or they're just dangerous throws in general, which they are. And in my opinion, all throws are dangerous, but makikomi, um, in terms of showing technical mastery, showing a beautiful throw, how you let go of that lapel and you just create that, you know, flowing circular motion in midair and landing them flat on their back, no need to pass their legs, etc. It's just nothing short uh, of beautiful. And you can um, fully engage in a controlling position uh, like the Kesa Gatame, which is also a very like a basic but very effective judo position. So any uh, variation of Kesagatame, Ushiro, Hon, Kusure, after Makikami is a great start for you to engage in Neiwaza. And at the same time, you will have that deer in a headlight moment, you know, that I talked about two days ago. So um, if you are someone that's trying also Togari in BJJ and you often go through it and you're drilling it, Try and add a makikomi finish to it in case you experience a lot of resistance, someone dropping their weight, someone putting their opposite leg in order to defend, turning towards you, etc. Let go of that lapel, wrap it around and try to go to the ground from there. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only, but if you're not, my main content will always be here on the channel. So please don't feel obliged. But your support would mean greatly. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.